my career started uh, in the early 80s and for the past 20 years I have uh, performed a lot of uh, mitral and aortic valve uh, surgery and so tricuspid valve surgery either repair or replacement so that I would say that my uh, my clinical activity is focused uh, for about 80% into valve surgery right now. The indication for heart valve surgery uh, are obviously different from aortic valve and mitral valve. Aortic valve, uh, the most frequent indication for aortic valve surgery is aortic stenosis. The valve becomes very calcified and doesn't open up anymore. So there is no medical therapy for this condition and we just have to replace this valve. For the mitral valve, the most frequent indication for mitral valve surgery is mitral regurgitation. The valve is leaking a lot. So for aortic valve surgery, we have to replace the valve when the valve is stenotic and narrow. If we have a mitral valve prolapse with mitral valve regurgitation or mitral valve leak, we can repair that valve with a high incidence of success, over 90% if the surgery is performed by competent surgeons. There are some situations in which the valve is leaking, but a repair is not possible. Very often, this is uh, um, in patients who have prior heart attack. There are two uh, general types of uh, uh, valve uh, prosthesis or artificial valves. One is a mechanical valve. Mechanical valve means that it's completely man-made. There is no biologic tissue in the valve. This is a mechanical valve it's called a bi-leaflet valve. There are two little leaflets here and they open and close. And then you see this cuff, which is a, a fabric called Dacron. And this is the cuff where the stitches goes, go in and anchor the valve where we want to, to position. And this can be an aortic valve or can be a mitral valve. The issue with this valve is when this valve is, is uh, in the blood flow, the blood will tend to make little blood clots around all the hinge points of the valve. And for this reason, the patients who have a valve like this need to take a, a pretty a, a significant blood thinner called Coumadin, or they alike. And Coumadin requires a, a very careful uh, follow-up with the doctors and blood tests to make sure that the amount of Coumadin is the appropriate amount. Uh, the other type of valve that we have is called a biological valve or a tissue valve. And it's called uh, in this way because uh, a portion of the valve comes from an animal. And the animal can be either a pig or a cow. This is a typical example of a biological valve. And you see the internal part of the valve, you see that there is still a cuff of a, a, a fabric called Dacron, but the inside portion comes directly from a, a pig valve. And this valve is a, a much uh, more user-friendly in the sense that uh, you need to take a blood thinner only for a certain period of time. And the downside of the valve is that it doesn't last as long as the mechanical valve. So the durability of the valve is very much related to the patient's age. If you are over age 70, this valve will last 15, 20 years. If you are younger than 60, it will probably last 10 years. And this is a cow valve here. And this doesn't come for a valve of a cow, but the tissue that they use is uh, the, the sac that there is around the heart called pericardium. So this is called a peri bovine pericardial valve. And uh, uh, for aortic 
verb, this has become the verb of choice, uh, the bovine pericardia valve. We have, uh, obviously, uh, different sizes. So this is a valve sizer. So what we do, first we remove the disease valve, and then we use this sizer to size the opening of the valve, and so we can choose the appropriate size valve. We have different size valve in the shelves, and the valve can be small, like in this one, or can be double size depending on the size of the opening. The valve technology has improved significantly. Um, and the valves have become more efficient. To give you an idea, you see how much bigger this valve is than this valve. Obviously, this valve is smaller, but the, the cuff around it in this valve is much smaller, and the opening in relation to the diameter of the valve is quite nice. So a lot of progress has, has, made, uh, has been made through the years in this aspect. There are new valves now that are called sutureless. The first sutureless valve has just been approved by the FDA for use in this country. It's put it in just like uh, with a, a system similar to this in shape. It's put it in and then deployed right where the opening of the valve is. Uh, so uh, in theory, this is a much faster procedure. The other improvement is that uh, the overall procedure has become so standardized. You know, uh, I have done 300 aortic valve replacement without losing a patient. So uh, that it has become quite safe. The transcatheter devices uh, are um, definitely uh, one of the great achievement of uh, uh, cardiac valve technology. So the valve is put at the tip of this catheter and then is passed through the artery in the leg backwards up around the aorta and down where the opening of the valve is. The patient's valve is not removed. The patient's valve is left there and the new valve is deployed inside the old valve. This uh, has been used very much in patients who cannot have open heart surgery for some physical conditions that makes them, the surgery very risky. Uh, and um, the results are quite good. When a patient uh, is being told by his cardiologist that he needs a valve the replacement, the most important thing that the, the patient has to decide is where can I have this procedure done safely? And he should uh, go to a center where a certain critical number of these procedures is performed every year. I think that uh, there is a difference in the outcome if you go to a place where they do 10 valve replacement a year versus a place where they do 200 valve replacement every year. Uh, I think that they, the, there is a certain difference in outcome.